Hi guys, it's Charles here with Charles Harrison Music. Hope you're all doing very well. Today I'm really excited to bring you this video because two of these three approaches we're going to be doing today have absolutely blown my mind over the last couple of years. One of them a few years ago and one of them very recently in fact. And I wish I'd had this knowledge when I first started trying to get into jazz. The main reason for that is because I had the theoretical understanding to get my head around these concepts, as most of you will, because all you need is to understand the idea of a triad. And that's why these ideas are so powerful. A little disclaimer here is that two of these approaches are not my own. They are from players who I will discuss in a moment. If you like these approaches and you like the licks that I've created using these approaches, you have two options. If you would like to hear more from those approaches, you can either buy the resources, uh, which will be in the description box below, and support these guys, or you can use the theory which I'll be showing you today to craft your own licks. And I recommend a combination of the two. Even if you're a really high-end professional player and you can come up with your own licks easy peasy, these books, well, first of all, they're going to explain it so much better than I will. Best to get it straight from the horse's mouth. And secondly, you get all sorts of licks and other resources with these. So it's really well worth every penny. So let's get into it. The only knowledge you'll need to get the most out of today's lesson is understanding what a triad is. And a triad is simply three notes played at the same time. There are some triads that sound better to the average Joe than others, but you could pick three random notes, and that is technically a triad, and that is all we're talking about today when we use the term triad. Four commonly agreed and nice sounding ones are major, minor, diminished, and augmented sounds. If you understand those concepts, you're good to go. Let's get straight into the first approach. So the first approach here isn't really attributed to anyone. I've just come up with all the licks today myself, but this first one, everyone does this, and we're just playing diatonic stacked triads. All that means is once we've played the first three notes, that ending note becomes the root of the next triad. My first triad is A major, A, C sharp, and E. The last note of that is E, so my next triad is gonna be based on E. And because we are being diatonic here, I'm only using the notes of the A major scale. Key of A major. Let's hear it. So that's a nice primer lick, and that's the first approach here, stacked diatonic triads. Now the second approach is also diatonic, and this is the first approach which I'm afraid I can't take any credit for. I've created this lick using the techniques and theories formulated by Tim Miller and Mick Goodrick in the book which you can find a link to in the description box below. It is an absolute must read. Now the fascinating thing about both of the resources I'm going to be referring to today is that they both explain their theory in a post-it note size of paper. It can be condensed down because it's so basic and so simple, and yet, of course, so incredibly powerful that any player of, of you know, once you've learned a triad, you could learn a triad in your first few weeks of playing, and you then have all the tools required to create the most outside sounding jazz lines you've ever heard in your life. The Tim Miller and Mick Goodrick approach is based on this theory of generic modality compression. Now, generic modality means it can work with any scale, as long as it has seven notes in it. Today, again, I'm going to stick with A major, but you could be doing this with... You could make up your own scale if you really wanted to, but you could be doing this with the harmonic scales, you could be doing this with melodic scales, you could be doing this with any seven note scales that, that you've got learned already. A major, today, there's only two steps to generic modality compression. The generic modality part means you need to choose a scale. Now the piece of music normally dictates what key you're in and therefore what scale you're in. But if not, if you've got an option, pick one. It could be generic, it doesn't really matter. The compression part is you remove the root from that seven note scale. By removing the root, you now have six notes to play with, not seven. It has become compressed. The final step is those remaining six notes, you split into two groups of three or two triads and you can split them any way you like. There's six notes there, you can pair them in any order, as long as you end up with two triads. Today, the triads I've picked in the key of A major 
are B, C sharp and E and G sharp, D, F sharp. They're completely arbitrary chords, I just liked the sound of them. And I've then used those two note groupings, those two triads, as the basis for a lick. Let's have a little listen. <laughs> As the title of the book suggests, Creative Chordal Harmony, this book is leaning more towards the harmonic side and, and the accompanying side of guitar. However, if a triad works for harmony, you can use that same triad and arpeggiate it to create lines, and that's exactly what we've done in today's lick. That leads us nicely onto our last approach, which is by George Garzoni, or George Garzone, I'm not quite sure. Again, post-it note sized rules here, really simple. Whichever triad you ch choose to start on, the next triad must be based on a note, a semitone above or a semitone below your finishing note. So just to give you an example of that, if I pick A major and finish on E, my next triad must be based on either E flat, which is a semitone below, or F, which is a semitone above. The second and final rule is once you've picked either E flat or F in this instance, whichever triad you form can't take the same inversion as the previous triad unless you play the notes in a different order. So if I pick E flat, I can't just go E flat G, B flat, because I've just played A, C sharp, E, which is root third, fifth, so I can't go root third, fifth on E flat. I could go root fifth, third. And that's as simple as this is. Well, let's quickly look through this. And again, the tab and score are available in the description box below. The triads in this lick sound like this. funky, so outside sounding, just using triads. So if you've made it this far, well done. The first two examples, of course, pretty diatonic sounding if you stick to major scale sounds, but the world is your oyster. You can pick any weird sounding scales you like to for the generic modality compression. For the George Garzoni approach, it's literally called the random chromatic triads, which tells you exactly how it's going to sound. And you can come up with some ridiculously dirty lines with this, guys. I've kept it pretty PG. <laughs> for today's lesson, just so that people can get into this. But the idea behind this is limitless. Major arpeggios, minor arpeggios, diminished, augmented, the world is your oyster. And once you've got the idea of those two rules under your fingers, you can start to get really, really creative with this and you, you just accidentally stumble across some insane lines. Hopefully you found that useful, guys. I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Check out the website for the notation and I'm trying to keep the blog updated and regular, so I look forward to seeing you over there. Hope you're all well. See you in the next one. Cheers.